In five minutes or less, I'm gonna show you how I vibe coded my AWS infrastructure for the SaaS project that I'm working on called View Creator. One of the biggest questions that I get asked is about security and if by vibe coding, you can actually create a secure project. And the answer to that is yes. And I'm gonna try and show you how I personally did that in the project. As most of you already know, I'm on a mission to vibe code an app until I make a million dollars. And currently View Creator has now over 500 creators on the platform and we've done this in under 30 days. In order to build a secure and scalable product, I had to put a ton of time myself into learning the best way to create the AWS infrastructure and the security systems that were put in place um, and vibe coded by Cursor. So let's get right into it. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure you do so, but this is going to be a very no nonsense video and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. All right, so the first step and the first thing that I want to introduce you to is something called AWS Cloud Formation. So AWS Cloud Formation is a way for you to be able to create infrastructure as code and be able to version that infrastructure. So here is the official page. It's at aws.amazon.com slash cloud formation for you to be able to read a little bit about the benefits, use cases of what cloud formation actually is and learn a little bit more. But you can see here that, you know, speed up cloud provisioning with infrastructure as code. And as a vibe coder and somebody that's utilizing AI, something important to know is that when you use cloud formation, it allows you to use vibe coding and use tools like cursor or codex or or Claude code to be able to create your infrastructure because the AI understands DevOps and the AI understands cloud formation and what the best practices for a cloud formation project actually are. So when you're vibe coding and you want to vibe code your AWS infrastructure, I highly recommend that you use AWS cloud formation because this is what I did as essentially what you do is you will use CloudFormation to be able to set up a new project in your um, repository or in your GitHub or whatever it is. Um, I'll actually go over to my GitHub here and kind of show you what that looks like for me. Um, so let me go over to my organizations here and I'm gonna go to the View Creator organization and I'm just gonna go to repositories and I'm gonna show you guys essentially, um, where is it? It's right down here. So the last time it was updated was two weeks ago because now I'm done provisioning my infrastructure. But you can see here that in this repository, this is how I deployed my initial setup for AWS um, um, and created it using CloudFormation. You can kind of see the structure of the project here and all the MD files and all the readmes, et cetera. So, you know, you can see how the structure is broken down here for this project. And you guys can even screenshot this and pass it into, um, you know, an AI assistant and kind of have it break down the file structure that I implemented. But you can see here that I have templates, scripts, docs, configs, and then really important is GitHub workflows because essentially what GitHub workflows are is if you're not familiar with the, uh, the .github slash workflows file is this, this is actually how you can deploy infrastructure and deploy code to AWS. So initially when you think about it, and I actually got this question recently in our Discord, if you haven't joined our Discord, make sure you do so. There's gonna be a link in the description down below. That's where, where the BridgeMine community hangs out and it is a very engaged and um, connected community. So don't do that if you haven't already, but somebody asked me the other day there and I answered his question about, hey, how do I actually connect my local project that I'm working on up to AWS, right? And it's very simple. All you have to do is create a .github slash workflows file. And if you even just take a screenshot and ask, um, you know, an AI assistant about this, it will, you know, you'll be able to understand better, but this is the best way to do it, at least the way that I did it. I think it's a very good way to do it. I've done it for several startups now. So create that .github workflows file. And then you're also going to have to go to your settings over here. Um, and you're going to need to, if you go down to secrets and variables, this is critical guys, all right? In this secrets and variables actions here, this here allows you to then actually set up specific keys associated with um, you know, that deployment. So for example, I have a role ARN and when you set up a role ARN, you can also talk to AI about this, but essentially what a role ARN is, is allows you to set up an IAM role on AWS and connect it to this GitHub action so that when the action is spinning up, it has specific uh, permissions to be able to create that AWS infrastructure. So you'll need to make sure that you focus on actually setting up this GitHub workflow file, as well as then setting those secrets and variables to then connect your AWS account. After you've built this cloud formation project and set up your GitHub actions workflow and configured in GitHub, essentially those secrets that I just showed you, 
The next step is to actually deploy that. And then one thing that I will say is that I promise you that your CloudFormation project will not deploy on the first try. And to be able to debug that, you can use Cursor or whatever Vibe coding tool that you use, and you can actually configure an IAM role to be able to then pass in permissions so that Cursor or whatever Vibe coding tool that you can use can actually debug and diagnose the deployment issues that the CloudFormation project is using by using Describe Stack. So if you're familiar with the AWS CLI, you can set up profiles with an IAM role on your computer, you can see I have the BridgeMind CLI and the View Creator. And then all you have to do is tell Cursor to um, use this AWS profile to access my AWS account and review the CloudFormation deployment and fix any errors that you see. And you can just paste that in. And I'm not gonna run this because it's gonna essentially uh, show sensitive information about my AWS account. But this is like, once you put those two things together, you are going to be unstoppable because you're essentially deploying a cloud formation project. And then you can have AI debug any deployment issues that happen because it can use the AWS CLI to use something called describe stacks. Describe stacks is very important. So that's a very large overview. I think I'm a little bit over five minutes, so I, I wanna stop it here. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and join the Discord and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. That, that's a very high level view of how I did this and I did do it right. So um, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure you do so and there's gonna be more content coming like this soon. I'll see you guys in the future.